I've just signed a letter along with a coalition of experts, civil society and community organizations, leading activists and campaigners calling on the new justice secretary to work at pace to end one of the most shocking, cruel, inhumane, degrading and monumental injustices of the past half century, IPP sentences. A scandal which has already claimed the lives of 90 people serving IPP sentences in prison and a further 31 that we know of in the community. I can't overstate the urgency on this. In June, one person serving an IPP sentence, a staggering 12 years over tariff, set himself alight. Another began his second hunger strike. This insanity has got to end. We must now put a stop to this inhumane and indefensible treatment which has absolutely no place in a modern Britain. And political leaders previously lacking the courage to take action must now find the courage to do so. Now last November, Campaign for Social Justice and I asked you to imagine a country where a prison sentence of 18 months has lasted 18 years, where a man spends 18 years in jail for trying to steal a coat, or is in prison for 11 years for stealing a mobile phone. Sentences described by the UN Rapporteur for Torture as an egregious miscarriage of justice and psychological torture. It's unthinkable, isn't it? Yet it's happening right now in this country. Behind these bars is a man who has been in prison for 11 years for stealing a mobile phone. It's absolutely shocking. Yet so many of us have been completely unaware. We've even seen reports of one prisoner that served 16 years in jail for stealing a flower pot at the age of 17. Just think about that. IPP sentences were rightly abolished over a decade ago on human rights grounds, but not retrospectively. So we still have almost 3,000 people serving these sentences from behind bars and even more living in the community under constant fear of recall for minor infractions or even mere accusations of wrongdoing. This has had a devastating impact on the mental health of people serving IPP sentences, both in prison and in the community. This is one of the most scandalous uh, stories in the British justice system in a long while. The psychological effects on the individuals uh, would amount, in my opinion, depending on an individual assessment, to psychological torture. IPPs were designed to be given to serious offenders whose crimes didn't warrant a whole life sentence. The problem is, IPPs were given out far more widely than initially anticipated. And in many cases, they were given to people who had committed low-level crimes. Former Supreme Court Justice Lord Brown called IPP sentences the greatest single stain on our justice system. And Lord Blunkett, the Labour Home Secretary who introduced the sentences, now regrets them. There are times in life when you put your hands up, I got my part of it wrong. Just think about this for a moment. Many people who were in prison for low-level crimes have now been left in prison indefinitely, with no sense of hope and sadly many end up taking their own lives. In recent years, we've seen a surge in self-inflicted deaths of IPP prisoners in custody. This tragic miscarriage of justice has got to end before more lives are lost. The film we posted last November to bring this debate to a wider audience has, with your help, been viewed more than 15 million times. And these are typical of the comments the film is getting. Truly shocking absolutely horrifying, unbelievable, utterly awful, madness, inconceivable, cruel. This is what Lord Ponsonby, leading for Labour on justice in the House of Lords, said in a debate on this issue in May. My lords, my lords, we have said that in government we will work at pace to bring forward an effective action plan that will allow the safe release of IPP prisoners where possible. The new government must now honour the commitment it made in opposition and work at pace to end this cruel, inhumane, degrading and most monumental of injustices. Now, the House of Commons Justice Select Committee says that a resentencing exercise 
overseen by a panel of experts for everyone still serving an IPP sentence is the only way to address the unique injustice caused by the IPP sentence. So please, now let's get this done. And there are a raft of other measures that must be implemented urgently and within the first 100 days of the new parliament, including all the IPP-related provisions in the Victims and Prisoners Act. A ministerial statement to Parliament is needed setting out the new government's plans and timetable to address all the outstanding challenges affecting those under an IPP sentence. And a commitment, a real commitment from the new government to set up an expert committee in line with the recommendation of the former Justice Select Committee to advise on the practicalities of a resentencing exercise. As IPP sentences are a problem that was created by Parliament itself and can only be solved by Parliament through new legislation, the new government must act at pace as it committed to do in the House of Lords debate. In government, we will work at pace to bring forward an effective action plan that will allow the safe release of IPP prisoners where possible. So let's now get this done. Let's work together to end one of the most shocking, cruel, inhumane and monumental injustices of the past half century before more lives are tragically lost.